Hey everybody, my name is Spaz, and I'm a CD junkie. On this episode, I'm going to discuss one of my favorite bands of all time. And when I say favorite bands of all time, I truly mean it. I treat every favorite band of all time like a child. I cannot love one more than the other. I love them all equally and passionately. But this time, this episode, I'm going to be discussing a band called Madness. Now, Madness were essentially a seven-piece band. Each of the band members had nicknames. There was uh, keyboardist Mike Barson, who was Monsieur Brasso. There was vocalist Graham McPherson, who's known as Suggs. There was bassist Mark Bedford, known as Betters. There was drummer Daniel Woodgate, known as Woody. There was guitar player Chris Foreman, known as Chrissy Boy. And there was sax player Lee Thompson, who also went under El Kixo Saxo and El Tomo. And then there was the seventh member, Chaz Smash, uh, whose real name was Cathal Smith. Now, Chaz is not featured on the cover of this fantastic album. When I saw this album cover, when I walked into Licorice Pizza and I saw that album cover, I said, oh my gosh, that looks so fun, so exciting. I got to check this band out. Now, at this point, K-Rock was not playing them. Uh, none of my friends had bought anything by Madness. Nobody knew anything about them, but it just looked so fun. I, I, I had no idea whether it was going to be punk or power pop or whatever. I just knew that with that album cover, I had to try it out. And boy, I love this album to this very day, released 40 years ago. That's right. It's the 40th anniversary of this album. Uh, what does Madness sound like? Well, back in these days, they were more ska. Uh, they're part of the whole two-tone Sky Revival scene uh, that happened in uh, 79 alongside the Specials and uh, the Beat, also known as the English Beat, Body Snatchers, The Selector, Bad Manners, bands like that. Uh, but this was really inspired by Ska, which was a Jamaican sound from the 60s. It was very sort of upbeat, danceable Jamaican music that um, that later... Uh, the Jamaicans slowed down a little bit, and then they created reggae with it. But back in, it was upbeat, jaunty, exciting, fun. And Madness took ska, but they built on top of it. They added 60s influences, uh, you know, 60s rock and pop influences, music hall, and stuff that, you know, inspired them and they listened to when they were kids growing up. And these guys were kids when they made this album, like late teens, early 20s. And the music produced by Clive Langer and Alan Winstonley was beyond their age. I mean, it was music that, to my ears, should have been created by bands with members twice their age. But yes, this has the, the title track, One Step Beyond. It has My Girl, uh, Bed and Breakfast Man. It has the song Madness on it. Uh, lots of just fantastic, great pop songs in the middle of the night. Fun, uh, just a great, great listen from beginning to end now i have two versions of the album two expanded versions one is the standard deluxe edition which was a two cds with bonus tracks and the other one was a 35th anniversary with different bonus tracks and a dvd so either one you are going to love so definitely check it out that was 1979 now in 1980 October 10th, to be exact, I was sitting in high school, uh, and right after class, you know, the final class, I had to go to driver's ed, and I sat through driver's ed, the longest hour of my life. After that, I hopped on my 10-speed bike, rode it to Licorice Pizza, the local chain record store, and I bought their second album called Absolutely, and it is absolutely fantastic. This is the UK Deluxe Edition, slightly different cover than the US version, uh, but boy, it's just chock full of fantastic songs. This is the album with um, uh, Baggy Trousers, Embarrassment, Ernie, Disappear, um, just <laughs> chock full of great stuff. I mean, when I listen to this album, it just brings back so many wonderful memories passion i mean i feel those memories again it's not just in here it's in here it's absolutely fantastic this actually includes bonus tracks and a second cd with a live show speaking of live shows when they toured america for this album um i had gone to the roxy with my brother mike and our friend rick infelt um to see robert gordon and in the audience 
or actually in the line outside was most of the members of Madness. So I started talking to a couple of them and then I ended up talking to Lee Thompson, the sax player. He invited me to their sold out show that was happening in Reseda the following evening. So me and Rick Invelt drove and saw Madness on the Absolutely Tour. Nuts in May, 1981. Uh, then later that year, um, when we had seen them, they had done some, at that time, unreleased songs. It was the, it was right when the single Grey Day had come out. And that was just a fantastic single. Uh, very different for them. More moody. Um, but it was on their next album, which was called Seven. And this is... Is this a better album than Absolutely? Not really, but to me it's my favorite. I like it more than Absolutely. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's more of an emotional attachment to this album. This is the album that has Shut Up, Cardiac Arrest, Pack-A-Mac, Grey Days on there. And it's got some B-sides and, and uh, rarities and uh, uh, BBC Sessions, I think, on there. Uh, but two CDs, fantastic album. More mature it was like they were moving away from, hey, you know, we're, 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 we're kids making this fun, jaunty, upbeat music. Uh, let's, let's put some thought into this. Let's, let's put some thought to the arrangements. And, and it was moving towards the more sophisticated side of like Ray Davies type um, songwriting. Uh, actually, Ray Davis. I still call him Ray Davies because that's what us Americans do when it's uh, D-A-V-I-E-S. Uh, but uh, uh, Madness 7, fantastic album. Now, the interesting thing about this album is they were releasing the singles. You know, Grey Day had come out, and I think uh, uh, Shut Up had come out. But then all of a sudden, boom, out comes this single called It Must Be Love, which was not on the album. It was not on the original album. Uh, and then they released, like, Cardiac Arrest. So th they released two singles from the album, a non-album single, then another single from the album. But you know what? Guys like me were buying them like crazy. And of course, I Must Be Love is a huge hit for them in the UK because it wasn't released in the US. Now, speaking of not released in the US, after the album Seven, they released a compilation called Complete Madness that had a song called House of Fun on it, which was not on any album. Then out comes a single that really made its mark in the UK and would make its mark in the US. They came out with a single called our house and that is definitely their most well-known single in the u.s it was on this album here uh called the rise and fall that came out in 1982 now this album is not a fantastic album i know critics love it and i know fans love it i don't think it's as good as the previous three but it does have our house it does have tomorrow's just another day and yes it's a really 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 good album uh but i don't love it 100 percent. but a lot of people do but instead of this album coming out in the U.S., what they did is they took the best of this album, and then they took the previous singles, um, Our House, or then they took the previous singles, House of Fun, It Must Be Love, and I think maybe one or two tracks from uh, the One Step Beyond album, and then they created an American album called Madness. And of course, Madness had Our House, which is a huge hit in the U.S. for them. So actually... This album is the original album that Our House is on. Sort of a concept album, but then they released a couple more singles, such as uh, Wings of a Dove, which was very uplifting, had a gospel choir in it, uh, and then The Sun and the Rain. And then they released Keep Moving, which did not have those songs on it. Um, it did have the single Michael Caine on it. This, again, was a more mature album. They were thinking less about singles and more about sort of the sound of the album and, and, and the album flowing together. Um, they do have some great songs. You know, Victoria Gardens is another song. It's a strong record, but you can tell that they're sort of running out of steam. And you can tell even more when keyboardist Mike Barson, Monsieur Barceau, left the band. Now, the album did come out in America. I just happen to have the American version. And that... They added uh, a couple tracks on there. They added Wings of a Dove and The Sun and the Rain. So if you want those two songs, you can get them as bonus tracks on this two CD edition. Or you can just get you know hang on to your American one if you've got that already. Now let me remind you, remember when I told you that Clive Langer and Alan Winston Lee produced their albums? They were still producing their albums. So they were sounding just 
absolutely fabulous. Langer and Winston Lee um, also produced Dixie's Midnight Runners and um, lots of great albums around this time. Uh, but then with Mike Barson gone, uh, they sort of started changing a lot. In fact, this album called Mad Not Mad, which came out in 1985, this was a very dark album indeed. A lot of slower songs, um, not as 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 jaunty and exciting and fun. Uh, in fact, not at all. But there were some great songs in here, like you know, "Yesterday's Men" is a great song, and um, "Tears You Can't Hide." So, not an absolutely stellar album. A very mature album. Uh, and and when I say dark, I don't mean like like uh, somber and sad. It's just not an upbeat album. And after this, they released a single called uh, Waiting for the Ghost Train. Uh, Mike Barson had come back just for that single. And that was it for Madness. They said, adios, amigos. And um, that was kind of the end of them for a little while there. Three years later, out comes The Madness. That's right. I know it's a little strange, The Madness. This actually wasn't Madness. It was for the members. Uh, there was... Uh, Suggs, and there was Chris Foreman, and Lee Thompson, and Cathal Smith. But Woody, the drummer, went in a different direction. He he helped form uh, Voice of the Beehive, which had a couple hits. Uh, but this album is Madness trying something new. It sort of begins where Mad Not Mad ended, uh, adding different sounds, more electronics. Uh, there's some good songs in here. It just was not that successful uh, of an album they 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 were trying too hard i think to try something new some great songs in here great performances just as a, as an album it was not as solid as their previous albums and this 1988 release was the last thing that they released now suggs would eventually record solo and um uh, lee and chris would form uh, the nutty boys which became crunch then in 1992, all seven members reunited for a show uh, that they called uh, Madstock. And it was a huge success. Uh, those fine British people love Madness. And Madness are a musical institution there. So the band was greeted with open arms and plenty of love that inspired them to continue playing live together but it took another seven years 1999 before all seven of them got back in the studio and recorded an album that lived up to its name yes this is wonderful uh and it's a fantastic return to form again produced by langer and winston lee lots of great material i mean the minute you turn on and you hear like love struck you're it doesn't sound like they've ever been away this is uh a great upbeat wonderful album and of course plenty of bonus material uh, all of these so far apart from this uh, have been released on through salvo music it's a great reissue label it took another six years for a new madness album to come and that's the dangerman sessions and this was basically a collection of cover versions and this is the first time that madness released an album that was not produced by langer and winston lee and uh although it's a fun record it really is it's a really fun album um people didn't wait six years for cover versions and that might have uh helped push guitarist chris foreman uh to leave the band but uh he did leave the band after that album was released but thankfully four years later chris foreman chrissy boy was back in the band and they released probably their most critically successful album. This came out in 2009. It's called The Liberty of Norton Fulgate. And it's another concept album about London. Uh, and it's just great from start to finish. Now, all I have is the standard version. There's been other versions of this that came out, like I think probably a two, three, or four CD version with a whole bunch of alternate versions, unreleased tracks. And I just can't seem to find it for a decent price. But... I love this album, and so did everybody else, because it was a huge record for them. It even did better than Wonderful. See, Wonderful is a great return to form for Madness. Great songs, instantly appealing. The Liberty of Norton Fulgate is more of an album that 
it took a couple of listens to get into, uh, but it's, it's still fantastic. I mean, sometimes the greatest albums are the ones that kick in and and grab hold of your 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 your, your heart and soul the third or fourth listen, and that's one of those albums. I mean, there's some songs in there that were instantly lovable, but ultimately, uh, the Liberty of Norton Fulgate is just a fantastic album. So we had to wait another three years for a new Madness album, uh, but something happened in those three years because Mark Bedford disappeared, and he wasn't on the next album, and it was no longer produced by Langer and Winston Lee. Uh, it was, Clive Langer did produce a track on there, uh, but so did Stephen Street and a couple other producers. The album Wee Wee CC Ya Ya Da Da came out in 2012, uh, and very, very different from Madness. They were trying different styles, very successful, by the way. Uh, even though the song "My Girl 2, uh, it sounds nothing. It's not a remake of the song "My Girl." It just happens to be called "My Girl," so they called it "My Girl 2. Uh, but a solid collection of songs. Again, one that you have to listen to a few times. And for people expecting that Langer and Winston Lee production, are going to go, "Hey, this sounds different." That's right, because it is. So another fine album, "Wee Wee CC Ya Ya Da Da," and this album cover has a link to the Beatles. Do you know what that link is? It was created by Peter Blake, the same guy that did Sgt. Pepper. A little bit less fancy, a little bit less elaborate than Sgt. Pepper, but heck, it's madness. So definitely check that one out. Four years later comes Can't Touch Us Now, another fine album by Madness. Another great cover. You would think that that would be the one that Peter Blake did. But anyway, another fun album. Clive Langer was back, but Alan Winston Lee wasn't. But then Mark Bedford, the bass player, was back. But then Chaz Smash, also known as Cathal Smith, was gone. Uh, so this is a six-piece madness, recording another great collection of songs. And again, nothing that was going to hit you instantly. But once you listen to this album two, three, four times, uh, the songs were, were, were definitely you know clutching at your brainstem. And, and uh, another fine madness album. Now... As of right now, during their 40th anniversary, this is the latest Madness album. Hopefully something will come soon. It's been three years. All of this needs to be thoroughly investigated because they're an amazingly talented band that a lot of people overlook because they just think that they were the goofy guys from, from the UK. But they're much, much more than that. Um, but anyway, that is it. I appreciate you hanging out and listening to me chat about Madness and all the fun stuff that they've done over the years and um remember to come back again and uh we'll talk about some more music until the next time my name is spaz and i'm a cd junkie